Week five, week five. God. You know, sometimes I wonder if I'm making the best use out of this time I've been given. I've always used my own job as an excuse as to why I never get things done. It's like, I would, I would have made a game. I would have drawn a comic. I would have, whatever, learned a language. But like, but I'm so bored and tired. By the time I get home from work, I just want to have a couple of hours to myself and play a game or read a book or whatever. So now I've got all the time in the world. I don't really have that excuse, do I? So if I don't make a game now, regardless of how, like it almost, it doesn't matter whether it's good or bad or whatever. If I don't do it now, I never would have done it. And my entire life to this point would have just been bullshit, wouldn't it? It would have just been a load of bullshit, Matt. You're talking shit. Like you never would have made a game. It's like, I guess that's why I feel strongly that I have to do this. <laughs> anyway, let's have a look at this dumb game I've been making. Okay, so we move on from the title screen here, have a look at the loading screen. You see we've got a couple of new icons, some new information here. Level 2, HP 100, Attack 10, Defense 10. So I've added some stats here because I've, this week I've been working on the combat. Right, so first things first, we've got an XP bar here. That appears after your first fight. I've already done that on this save file. Click the map icon, we've got a new destination. It's the castle. I haven't actually drawn the castle yet. I had a go at the beginning of the Wii and I was experimenting with adding more colors into the game, but I couldn't figure out, I couldn't make it look right. I've really created a rug for my own back with this here. There we go. So, in the old version of the game, the way it worked is you clicked on the icon, the castle appeared, the creature went inside, a skeleton appeared, and then they just took turns backwards and forwards, bashing each other over the head until one of them went down. But in this game, you take direct control over the creature, you've got left and right movement, right mouse button to block, left to attack. There we go. We've got a pumpkin monster spitting fire at us from this right side of the screen here. You can block the attacks, but you have to be facing the correct direction. If you're facing the wrong way, even if you're blocking, you'll still get hurt. Great. All these things you have to consider when you're coding stuff. There we go. And he has a HP bar, which appears when he takes damage. Fantastic. Let's finish up. Ugh. Max B special, top of the head comes off. And you get some XP for winning the fight as well. Amazing. And that's what I can't believe. It takes such a short amount of time to demonstrate an entire week's work. But you're seeing the fruits of a week's labor there in the what 30 seconds it took me to show you that you can go home to program that in let's go back let's fight the pumpkin again perhaps you perhaps you blinked and you missed it da, 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 da. here he comes by the way while i was making this all the time like look at his walk cycle every time i was working on the sprite in my head i was going da, 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 <laughs> you get it. So what I'd like to do for next week is develop the combat further, polish it up a bit, and maybe introduce a new enemy type, and start building rooms so that you can progress and move towards the castle. We'll see. We'll see how we get on. Anyway. Enough about my game, let's have a look and see what other games I've been playing this week. While I've been waiting for the Trials of Mana remake, which just released today, I started playing the Final Fantasy VII remake. Now, i got to admit, when the Final Fantasy VII remake was announced, I was pretty sceptical about it, but in the time since it was announced, which is a long time ago now, feels like, I played Final Fantasy XV and really enjoyed it. And then when I started seeing gameplay footage of the remake, it started to look more and more promising. But there were still things that I was worried about. Uh, number one, the voice acting. I remember watching the demo with the, you know, the bombing mission at the start of the game and they fight the big scorpion robot boss. And I'm looking at it thinking, my God, these characters do not shut up. They're constantly talking. And I was worried that throughout the game, it would be odd, like, I was worried that all the characterization would be all wrong, like, all wrong compared to my nostalgia, that is. I mean, you got to remember, Final Fantasy VII came out in 1997, I think. 
maybe it was a little bit later it came over to the UK, but still that means I was a teenager when I first played this game. I've got some very strong memories associated with it. But what I found playing the remake was that the, those worries about the voice acting disappeared. I very quickly got used to it. It felt right. I wasn't like looking at Cloud on Barrett and being like, why are they talking like that? Like it felt natural, it felt right to the characters. And it feels like it feels like the characters have been expanded upon, but in a natural way, in a way that makes sense. So I'm up to chapter seven or eight now, I think. And I just spent some time walking around with Ares through the Sector Five slums. See, I said Ares then, so to me she's Ares. But when the game says Aerith, which I thought would be a big problem, again I'm used to it. But walking around with Aerith. I'm getting a much stronger sense of her personality and the way she interacts with people. Like when you arrive in the Sector 5 slums, she like greets a shopkeeper and then she's just, there's some kids that she says hello to. And it really you really get a sense that this person is like a real living character who is alive and like has a life of their own. And that you're meeting someone and getting an insight into what it's like, what their life is like. And it just it makes the world really feel alive. And that's what I'm enjoying most about this Final Fantasy VII remake is getting to see another side of Midgar. Really, like, in, I think it's chapter four, you know, when you get to walk through down that street and it's like a sort of um, suburban, um, like, residential district. And you just get to see what a typical street, if you're a bit more well-to-do, if you're not living in the slums, if you're living up top on Midgar, what that kind of looks like. And it's just nice because when I was playing games, like back in the old PS1 days, like games with like pre-rendered background, like Star Ocean 2 or something, you you get to see this like lockdown version of the world. And I always wonder, like, what would it be like if I could go into this world and just look around the corners and what, what would this world actually look like? And Final Fantasy VII Remake, it's like having that dream come true. It really is like, I wasn't expecting to be drawn into it as much as I am, as much as I'm finding myself being drawn in playing it now. And I mean that from an emotional sense as well. Like I found certain musical cues and things like that would like create this huge wave of nostalgia in my head, even getting like a little bit choked up at points. It's pathetic, isn't it? But there you go, Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's really, like I'm really enjoying it to the point where I like Trials of Iran Mana Remake can just take a back seat for a bit while I'm playing this. And the thing I wanted to mention is I feel like there's some kind of mystery about this game. Like there's something going on. It's I get the feeling like it's not just a straightforward remake, like something, there's some kind of mystery at the heart of this game. I keep seeing thumbnails, you know, like popping up on YouTube, like what does the ending of Final Fantasy VII Remake mean? And the ending explained and stuff like that, you know. And thanks, by the way, for making those videos and then putting screenshots from the ending in the thumbnail. So even if you don't want to watch the video, you can just spoil yourself just by looking at the thumbnail. I mean, thanks for that, you bunch of assholes. But anyway, but I'm... So I'm avoiding, like, all media about it. And I've been careful myself, like, not to mention anything too specific and stuff like that. Intriguing, anyway. I'm excited to play more. Trials of Mana Remake, I did mention briefly, and it has come out today, and I managed to, I played a couple of hours of it this morning, and what a difference uh, a couple of decades makes, eh? Um, <laughs> all the conveniences of modern gaming are here, present in the remake, as you'd expect, and I'm really grateful. Like, there's a map, there's like little gold stars that show you which NPCs you're supposed to talk to to progress the story. You know, in the original, it's just a guessing game. You walk around talking to people until a flag pops up and then, hey, you've done it. Oh, thank God for that. The menus are snappy. It's got a glossary. It tells you what's been going on in the story. Perfect. When you're leveling up your stats, you can see what's going to happen. You can see which moves you'll unlock as you're leveling them up. It has tool tips. The remake actually bothers to tell you that there's plant pots at the inns and you can plant seeds inside them and get items. I didn't know that about the original. I didn't know it until I read it in game FAQs. Look, if they're gonna re-release these older games that don't have tutorials, can you at least include a comprehensive manual? I mean, please. Why am I, who cares? 
What's next? Anime of the week. I haven't really watched an anime this week. Hmm, try. Oh, there is a sweet ninja charger. Why did I do that? I tell you, I've been watching it's just loads of clips of Darren Brown on YouTube. Turns out he's got a YouTube channel. He's uploaded a bunch of his shows and just like clips of him like doing card tricks for Stephen Fry and stuff like that. That's been fun. I just fall into a rabbit hole of that, just watching one after another after another. You know, YouTube's like you get into something, and it's like, oh, here, have a million of them. You watch one video of like a dog being introduced to a kitten, and then suddenly all you've got is like dog introduced to duck, dog like squirrel, dog talking to a penguin, and whatever for the rest of your life. I tell you what, I did start watching. Remember, I was in Japan, I was looking for a manga called Gay 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 no Kisaro. Well, I found it in the end. Here it is, volume one. And it turns out that on Crunchyroll, they have the 2018 anime series. And Gege Gege no Kitaro has been going for like a long time, like decades. I want to say 1968 it started. Could be wrong there, but I can't be bothered looking it up. So there's a lot of it out there. And the 2018 series alone ran for 97 episodes. I call it the 2018 series, but it aired until I think March this year. So it just kept going and going. But I've watched the, maybe the first nine or ten episodes. It's good. It's fun stuff. Um, it's one of those shows where it's hard to sort of pin down the age bracket. I would say it's a kid's show, but it strays into like horror territory and there's some spooky, weird stuff going on. It's good. I, Yeah, worth a shot. Go on, you know what? Gege Gege no Kitaro, anime of the week. Even though I haven't watched it, I haven't watched hardly any of it. Ten out of 97 episodes. Check it out, the 2018 show. And that's it for another week, I think. Have a good one. I'll see you next week.